some light in here. Man, it is dark outside. Anyway, welcome back to another episode here from the off grid garage. And it's supposed to be summer, in the middle of summer now. And we should have warm temperatures, but I'm wearing a shirt, you know? I'm wearing a shirt now because we've got like 24 degrees only. I know this sounds not too bad if you are in winter right now, but we should have like 35 degrees now, pure sunshine. But now we've got thick clouds. And look at this, the AO lithium battery charges with 0.3 amps. The Blue Eddy charges with 17, 18 watts from a 220 watt panel. And here we are generating 500 watts from our solar panel in the off-grid garage. Not even enough to power our loads. Battery is going down. Well, I guess this is what the battery is for, right? To supply power when you haven't got enough sun, which is today. <laughs> All right. Um, anyway, we want to do some more testing in regards to the lithium, uh, to the AO lithium battery, as it called. And here, here, here. This is what happened yesterday morning. I want to show you something very interesting with the AO lithium battery and the JBD BMS it has. The BMS is in kind of a lockdown now and I cannot revive it without a trick. See what I have done is I have discharged the battery completely now until the BMS has shut off. And you can see here the discharge button is off and I cannot turn it on again, right? Because the recovery voltage of the cells needs to be over 3 volts to turn back on the discharge current, uh, the discharge switch. So what I have now done is connect the battery and the solar charge controller back to the solar panels to recharge it, right? But it won't. It doesn't recharge. The solar charge controller is connected, positive, negative, but obviously the solar charge controller needs power to start up and it doesn't allow any outgoing power anymore. So the solar charge controller is dead. And even if I connect solar, it won't come online because it is reliant on the battery. So the only real thing I can do now is take the bare wires off the solar panel, connect it to negative and positive and charge the battery from solar directly without using the solar charge controller and if I do that well of course the solar charge controller comes online right but as soon as I take the solar panel away again it turns off because the BMS is still saying now nah, we are not over three volts I'm not allowing you to discharge so I'm connecting the solar back in and I have to leave it running until, I think all of the cells need to be over three volts, right? See, this is a bit of a stupid situation now with this BMS. At the moment, I'm not 100% sure if this is the same with other BMSs as well. The charge switch is still on, so it allows power to come in, but your solar charge controller won't start without the battery. At least this one not. So maybe this is only the combination of this charge controller with the battery. I need to check with another solar charge controller. But they're always saying you should always connect the battery first and then your solar panels. So if the charge controller doesn't detect any battery power, it usually doesn't turn on, right? It's an interesting deadlock at the moment. So, okay, let's keep this charging until we hit three volts and then we should see this one turning on. The charge controller turns on and then I can reconnect the solar panel cables to the solar charge controller. Hmm. Yeah, lights are dead. It is still turned off. It doesn't do anything. So I need to recharge manually to over 3 volts. I mean, the good thing is we can adjust the settings and can set this a little bit lower to 2.7, for example, and then the discharge switch would turn on again, and then the solar charge controller kicks back in and would allow a charge through the solar panel. But with the default settings of the AO lithium battery and the JBD BMS, it is in a deadlock right now. 
So I have now reconnected the solar panels back to the solar charge controller. The charge controller is off because it cannot sense the battery, right? So there's no way for the charge controller to turn on. And what I'm going to do now is go into parameter settings and change the settings here to 2.8. Yeah, under voltage 2.5, under voltage release 3 volts. So if we go in here. Two point eight volts. Confirm. Success. Yeah, it turns on straight away. Look at this, huh? Look at this shit. Okay, so now I change it back to three volts. Confirm. And it should stay online now. Yeah. So now we've got charging and discharging is turned on. If I turn off discharging, the solar charge controller turns off. And now if I turn on discharging again, it will turn on again. So, and even we have 3 volt as the release voltage set, I can now turn on and off discharge as I like. So, it is now off. Let me turn it back on. Yeah, and the charge controller comes back online. See, now it is working because we haven't hit the 2.5 before. This was my man manual tempering now with the settings. And um, before in the original situation, it was we hit the 2.5, BMS turned off, and then it's waiting for up to 3 volts to recover. But because we changed the settings in between, it doesn't, it doesn't need the 3 volts anymore. So that's an interesting thing I found. And I'm not really sure if this is just the solar charge controller. Because as you can see, if I turn off this charge, the charge controller turns off. So it doesn't, it doesn't run from pure solar at all. If there's no battery, it turns off. I think this is like a protection thingy in the JN, say, JZ, whatever it's called. And there, turn it back on and it works. Isn't that funny? What do we have? 0.8 amps only. Huh. Just another quirky thing I found with this BMS and this solar charge controller. You now we are back here in the Xiaoxiang app connected to our AO lithium battery. We can see there 0 0.5, 0 0.6 amps coming in only. So interestingly, if I disconnect the discharge button, and you can see the charge controller in the back here as well, uh, like this, I I turn off discharge. Yeah, I leave the charge on, but I turn off discharge, and look, the charge controller turns off. Even there's still solar coming in, and it should keep charging, but the charge controller turns off. I have never seen this before. I think this is a unique feature of this charge controller, right? And I turn it back on. And I turn it back on. Yeah, and the charge controller starts up. So this charge controller obviously needs the battery, otherwise it won't start. So, which is actually good because we cannot destroy it, right? Even if the battery is disconnected and we have got full sunshine outside, uh, the charge controller won't fire because it cannot sense the battery. But then on the other hand, we are ending up in this deadlock. If the battery is empty during the night and the sun is not shining, the charge controller won't fire up in the morning anymore because discharge is turned off and the battery is waiting for energy coming in. But the charge controller is not working. So I want to, um, well, by chance I've got this charge controllers here, brand new ones, and I want to hook this one up to the AO lithium battery in the same situation as we have there, same solar panel, same battery, and see how this one reacts to the same situation. And I just want to see if this is a feature of the solar charge controller or of the AO lithium BMS. Let's find out. Okay, so first of all we have to connect to the solar charge controller. I think it's one, two, three, four. Couldn't pair now, it's Four times zero, and I think it's six times zero actually with Victron. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six times zero. Yes, yes. Ah, uh, it wants to do a uh, firmware update first. Okay. Current version two fourteen, new version two three seven update. Okay, I'll, I'll be back shortly.
Ah, this is the actual firmware update. I think before was the Bluetooth module update. So there are two updates coming to the um, charge controller. One is for the Bluetooth and one is for the actual firmware for the functionality of the device. It is on 106 and the new version is 307. Holy shit, have they sold me an old one here? Wow, that is far, 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 far behind. Oh well, anyway, it doesn't matter. It's like a Tesla, you know, it gets better over time. Uh, let's go into the settings. Have a look at the battery settings here. It auto senses the voltage. It is on, it is on, it doesn't really matter. It sits on a GL Victron deep charge, GL battery. It doesn't really matter. It's just to see if the BMS actually, holy shit, there's a lot more to actually set up here in this controller than in the old ones. Don't get sidetracked, Andy. Get back in the app. There we go. 0 0.7 amps. And now we want to see what happens to the controller if we turn off discharge. Okay, it's turned off. And this one stays on. See the blue light there? This one just stays on. And only if I turn off charging. See the blue light? Yeah, and then it goes into absorption mode because it cannot sense the battery anymore, but it still has PV input. This is what the um, Victron devices do. And they still supply power now to your load as far as possible with the connected PV. So I will disconnect the uh, solar now and simulate night. And then we turn on, then we turn on the um, discharge button again here and see what is happening, okay. Okay, so we've got now both buttons on. Battery is normally connected. There's no PV input here on the charge controller, but the battery is connected, obviously. So the charge controller is running. Yeah, there's the blue light. And now we simulate, well, the BMS shuts down because all the cells are empty. So discharge will be disabled. We turn this off. And let's see if there's still it should turn off actually because there's no outgoing power from the battery to the charge controller and we've got no other power connection to the charge controller. So it's totally dead at the moment. And then in the morning we have solar coming back to the charge controller and see if it starts charging the battery. Okay, PV is now connected. But it doesn't seem so. Oh, yeah, here it comes. Hang on, hang on. No, that was just a flicker of the PV. So it is the same situation. This is a problem with the BMS in general, I guess. See what's happening here? Deadlock again. The battery is empty, has disabled discharge to protect the cells. But the charge button is still on, so it allows actually incoming power. But the charge controller does not turn on. Neither the G, J, J, whatever, and the Victron does the same. Solar is connected. Let me just connect solar correctly here with the terminal. Ah, no, this one comes back. Could hear a click and it's bulk and it's charging so it is not the AO lithium battery it is the JJ GN whatever it is this charge controller so this one is obviously different to the Victron ones this one does not start up if there is no battery sensed while the Victron doesn't care as long as there's power input on the solar or power input from the battery, it starts charging, even our discharge switch is off. Yeah, and, and this makes totally sense. Because this one here runs in a deadlock with this battery or with basically any battery, it doesn't really matter because if the BMS turns off discharging, it cannot supply power to this controller and then the controller will not be able to start and supply power back to the battery, which is empty. See, I never... 
I, I never had this problem. The um, here the um, because the QUC CBMS uses a relay, yeah, to disconnect your battery completely from anything, charging and discharging at the same time. But it has this black wire connected to the output, so even the relay is disconnected here. With this black wire, it still senses what is going on on the output here, even the relay is turned off. So if the battery is empty, the relay would disconnect and stop further discharging. But with this black wire, it senses if the voltage is rising here again from a charge controller and the charge controller is starting to push energy in. This wire senses it and turns back on this relay. And then the full current obviously goes back into the battery. So I never had this problem because, because this happens only if your BMS has MOSFETs like the Jabata BMS inside the AO lithium battery or the JK BMS or an overkill or the DALI. Doesn't matter. All these, all these BMSs have MOSFETs. Well, this is a very interesting behavior of this J controller, right? And of the Victron as well. So they are quite different. One causes the deadlock, the other one doesn't. So I think we will now go and fully charge the battery and then I will show you what is going on with the BMS in the AO lithium battery and why I'm not happy with that. Okay guys, until, this might take a few hours now, until then guys, please let me know in the comments down below if you have made any similar experience with your solar charge controller, the BMS and your battery. Has your BMS locked you out and you could not recharge the battery anymore without tricking the BMS to turn on again? Because I think this is a common issue now with the MOSFET BMSs, which most of you may have, unless you've got a QUCC BMS. So yeah, guys, as always, I'm sharing here my experience. I'm learning here while I'm doing. I found an issue I need to explore. I need to test. I need to make sure I understand what's going on. And thankfully, we have got all the equipment here to do that. So yeah, let me know down below if you have had similar experience. Okay, guys, until the battery is fully charged, you stay charged as well, of course, and safe. And I'll see you in the next video coming out very soon here on the channel. We are getting more frequent with the videos again here. I think we now have all the equipment here almost. I'm still doing the design of our power wall more in one of the next videos here on the channel on the weekend from sunny hot Australia. Okay guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. See you then. Bye bye.